Inspiration Nation. Hello, YouTube, you can now hear us. TikTok put up some nonsense. Those on the audio streams, we appreciate you. Jose and Lee and Absent Ryan this week. Jose, go. What is the subject? Right. This uh, this week, we're talking about I wish I'd let myself be happy with regret number five from the book Five Regrets of Dying by Bronnie Ware. So, Lee, I'm going to ask the question again. This time without technical difficulties, <laughs> I appreciate that. Not talking difficulties. Uh, so, fast forward to the end of your life, thinking about you wish you'd be happier. Do you wish you'd be been happier right now? You're right at the end of your life. I, well, actually, probably at the end of my life, because I'm, I'm convinced, absolutely convinced, I'm going to live to 120. So I've got like, quick maths, number of years to go, 80 years to go till I, uh, is that right? 70 years to go. Whatever gets what makes me to 120. You know, it's just in my head. I'm just absolutely okay. beyond the shadow of a doubt. I just know it to be true. Know it to be true. Probably a subject for another day. Yeah, um, like but so I'm going to live to 120. So it's a long way to go. And I think where I am now, from this point onwards, and a few years past, until I get there, I will be very happy. So I will look back at the span of my life and think for the majority of my life, I was happy enough. If Tomorrow, a plane falls out of the sky and lands on my head and squishes me. Probably far more dramatic than squishes me, but let's say that's what happens. I don't know. I, th I think I spent a fair bit of my teens and my 20s and probably some of my 30s aspiring to fit in and always be looking forward and not feeling I'm where I should be. And I've talked, you yeah, know, we've talked about this on lots of episodes. So I don't think I was, and I think a lot of that was in my head rather than reality as you do you construct your own reality around me and i think i defined myself through a few bad spots but i think i projected that across all the good times as well um and i think i'm i'm becoming more and more aware of that retrospectively so if it was today i'd probably have some regrets about less mindfulness less living the moment not appreciating things for what they were i don't i don't exactly know how to describe it yet but mm. and i don't i think if you'd have said to me at the time are you happy i'd have said absolutely yes and i don't think i was unhappy i don't think i had like you had um jose i don't think i had like a depression period or anything else like that i just think i worried too much and that probably ebbed away at my happiness more than i realized given where i am now and not material change not outside things nothing else just the fact that i perceive what i can control and where i'm going and happiness and stuff like that differently i real i probably realize retrospectively there's probably a bit of a ramble and doesn't make a huge amount of sense but let's leave that there for a second and you can loop back to me again no i like that because i think you know you said about plane squishing you and i was thinking well i was squished you're not really thinking much time not much thinking time there right that's true that was uh, a bad example wasn't you know it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know if you're squished by a plane i don't think you'd be a liar there go well i think we'll think my life now i'm dead i'm dead already well you need to know if you're tomorrow dead. something terminally spears me through the stomach yeah. and it's irreparable but it's going to take mm. a few hours then mm. then i'll then probably I'll still, yeah mm. I'll probably yeah. be thinking, oh, my God, this hurts. But you get, you know, we'll, we'll you might, Yeah, that. that might be. The, that really hurts. Yeah, yeah. It's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, I, mean, I, I, was, I was unhappy for quite a... Well, I thought I was, when I was younger, I was very happy. When I was, like, blissfully, almost, like, blissfully ignorant, I was very happy. Like, when I was, little ch when I was a child, I say, like, you just don't see the real a thought of the world that everything's great, everything's happening, everything's good. Um, and then... You know, go through go through your work life, and you know, I went through that mental health phase, which just really woke me up to saying, "Well, okay, this is a tough life. This is a hard life, right?" Because um, your mum and dad protect you to some extent. Uh, mum really looked after me, bless her. She's now gone, but yeah, after after my mental health, that did really wake me up to say, "Oh, John, you do do things." But I was really happy when I was younger. Like I, I was a very happy child. That bit I think was great, and I want to get back to that. And I said this before, I'd want to get back to that to some extent. And I think I am getting there, but I still am quite serious about certain things. And if I fast forward into my life right now, and would I regret? I wish I'd been happier. I think I'm much happier now in the later parts of my life. This, you know, although my mum passed away, you know, maybe two years ago, I think right now, you know, I, I, I'm definitely been feeling happier since after my depression, and I've been, you know, now in my work life, in in my home life, because I shaped it through coaching and done a lot of work. I'm definitely happier. I like you, Lee. I'm recognising 
what I can influence, what I can't influence, and can let that go. Although I can still be angry, right? I was even watching the news the other day, and I thought, oh, I really don't like that. I can't remember what it was. It was something. And I was thinking, oh, that's disgraceful. And I thought, what am I doing? I can't control any of that. All I can do is influence. So not wasting time on things that I can't actually control and actually really focus on things that I can. And just knowing that, like you said, Lee, about judging and not judging and who am I to judge, right? Um, all we can do is, you know, hold ourselves to a higher standard um, and not project that on others. Um, and that's another thing that I've learned. But if I go back, to, if I go now to the end of my life, I think, I think I'd be all right. I think I'd be, I think I'd, you know, brought up two, two lovely children, done all right in my career. I'm pretty happy where I am, you know, um, financially, you know, well-being wise, pretty you know it's stuff that affects people like everybody but but overall i think you know doing i'm doing the things that i've always wanted to do though i didn't know i wanted to do them until later on like doing a podcast like i wouldn't believe you in 20 years we will be doing this podcast together and you know i'll be talking really deep subject in fact i was talking about someone this about the other day so i'm dropping my pen the other day um i needed an outlet for my conversations and uh, I always struggled you know because we always talk, talk about this don't we about you know wanting a deeper conversation well, how are you doing I'm all right how are you doing all right and you have that service conversation and this is this is why I think I got frustrated not that I wasn't happy is because I did I wasn't able to have this conversation now we can have them because of this podcast and that fulfills that need and uh, just want you everybody's out there listening I want this to help you so you know if you need something or need to shape something in your life you know to, to avoid that happiness not being as happy just just get do things that you enjoy that's the that's the key around it and 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 shape your life around it now you're not, not always going to be happy i think term happiness right you can't always be happy you know there are going to be things that come in and you're not going to be that happy so just remember that it's more around purpose i think lee mentioned this a couple of podcasts ago actually if you've got a purpose i mean i get up early now and all that sort of stuff i really enjoy getting up early because i feel our purpose helping people I want to help people through sharing experiences, coaching, doing these videos, um, and, and really just you know doing things I really enjoy, like my tennis and doing all that. But always focus on personal development. In fact, yesterday, I don't know how I got it here. I took a book with me. Oh, it's not here. Anyway, it's the inner game of tennis. I picked it back up again. Um, he loves a bit of tennis. Yeah, and it's called The Inner Game of Tennis, but it's by Timothy Galway. And I took it with me because I had a bit of time going to this offsite that I was going to. And uh, I was reading that, and then someone on the offsite said, What's that? And I said, Well, it's a, it's a tennis book, but it's about coaching tennis. But oh, surprise, surprise. But I love it. And this is what I love. And this is what I, I think if I went and, and I did what's on my deathbed by tomorrow, I think I'd be all right with it. I'd be all right with it. Good. That's what okay. I want to hear, Jose. That's me, really. That's me. Going back to this question. So you say you're happy, Lee. What what are the things that make you happy then? What what is it that's would you say gives you that contentment? I know you said that you've you've recognised that things are, you know, you recognise things aren't unique job. But what are the things that are you doing that are making you happier and contented? That you know that, that if you did get into life, that you say, Do you know, what? I'm good. I think it's being comfortable with who I am more than anything else. I think it's that what I you know being knowing that my definition of success a good life a happy life is all isn't based on other people's views or what other people see is important or what i perceive as what other people see is important but it's it's me and my version of that and focusing everything i do or certainly as much of everything i do as possible on that thing yeah i think that's more at a core of it i think that's it and there's things that creep in you know like we talked the, the mindfulness stuff and things clicking into place in life and et cetera, et cetera. But I think more than anything else, it's me knowing what those parameters are for happiness and building them on what I want. And it's hard to pick out bits of my day at the moment that aren't driving me in a direction of one of those things. So what are your parameters for happiness? Because someone might be able to pick up on to get your compound. Oh, that's annoying. That is annoying. Sorry about that, Lee. But what are your parameters for happiness? I think it'd be quite nice if, if I don't, you don't have to reveal everything, but like, be nice to get some yeah because some people might resonate with what your story is and so for me it's obviously oh sorry about this it's, it's purpose right it's <laughs> moved purpose, well away from the microphone there jose sorry I, I, i'll repeat that my my thing is purpose and like you say knowing who you are um really important but what would you say would, for you would be the parameters of happiness for you if i you just think if you out. would if you were to bullet point some key things about my life right now and give them to 18 year old me it would be like not just oh that's good 
because you can say, oh, you'd have this or do this or be here, and you're like, oh, that's really good. But they're not good. They're like, if I could, if I was to write down everything I'd want, and then I get that list of how everything is now and compare them by side side by side, they would be very comparable to one another. I'm trying to think of the best way to articulate it without divulging some personal specifics. But like from a from a work point of view, I think my job is like my ideal job right now in every way, shape or form. Not what it is, what I get to achieve, how much time I spend doing it, just all of that is perfect. Things grown up, it's simple things, but things even like home ownership seemed unattainable to me when I was growing up and I'm there and I always had this thing, someone would be like, oh, if you if you were successful, you know, what car would you drive? That's probably not a thing to younger generations now but it certainly was when we were younger and I always said I'd want to be understated so I wouldn't be a BMW or a Mercedes or an Audi guy but I'd want something that's understated success and I think that's for example that's what my car is now and I didn't it wasn't like I drove everything to I want to have this car it almost came as a byproduct on focusing on the other things so the material stuff around it is almost like a byproduct of that and like my backlog you like thing I love little projects and trying little things and I've carved out time to be able to do those things and try different things and experiment as we talked about here should be available I would say before the end of this year but I'm writing a book at the moment that was always on my achievement list and I've managed to make time to do that for me alongside my job and things I want to achieve doing in the house etc 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 and I just it's I'm focusing my time on on the things that make me happy basically Again, a bit of a ramble all over the show. Well, let's do a bit of promotion for the book. What's the book? The book is Inspiration Nation Year One. And I still do it now on our social media, at Listen to I-N, Listen T-O-I-N on Twitter. I put out a number of clips on social media. So when we started this, Mr. Jose, I started to look in ways to promote podcasts on social media and doing quotes and what are called audiograms, which is a quote with a bit of audio supporting the image, were two of the key things. So I, for a long time, for the first probably 120 episodes or so, I've got between three and five of these for every single episode. And I I rotate them around on social media. They get some good engagement. Again, appreciate people that look at them. If you retweet them, much love, appreciate that. And it supports the show. Um, But other than that, they're not really doing anything. And there's a lot of content there that aren't doing anything besides his Twitter cycle, which is, is valuable. That's what I did them for. But, you know, repurposing content is a big thing if you're in that creation. So I thought, well, why not put all these quotes into a book and write a little bit of a, either a little bit of a view on the show or expand on the message of the quotes and turn it into like a little inspirational guidebook. And I'm doing that for the first 52 episodes, which nicely ties in because it, there's a little bit of a narrative there of our journey and the growth of the podcast and what we've done, which is a thread that goes through this. And it, I don't know, poetically, it times quite nicely because episode 52 is the last episode before we went into lockdown for COVID. And it just, oh, wow. I don't know, there's how just cool something that? quite That's poetic. That's a weird pattern, that, isn't it? The cliffhanger, if you like, of that is how that first year of the podcast led us into that and almost in a way prepared us for it. So there's a bit of a detail there, but what I just hope it's like a nice you know you can open it and you've got a couple of little inspirational quotes and a bit of a motivational message and a bit of our story all kind of blended together that is a big piece of your happiness right and there, i think i've so far you really did you really did like go to town on that i just said well, what's the book and you went to town <laughs> that was off the top of my head as well i feel i'm going to go back and use that as a blurb for the book but i've so far i've curated episodes one to 41 so we're, we're that close to the end now jose i'm, I'm even thinking Don't i might get 41. there i'm even thinking i might get there this weekend for the first draft oh Holy moly, that's so good. Yeah, I, so I mean, that's the thing. It's in fact, and um, you know, talking about happiness, and you know, this is all, this whole podcast has you know permeated my life. You know, at work, and in fact, I've got to do this little presentation, and um, at work, and you know, it's around you know, coaching, and what I'm going to use one of the examples is the creation of the podcast story, right? You know, how do you get to this thing, right? You know, that and that. You know, things like when you talk, you know, we had that discussion in the pub, you know, in looking back, it's just incredible. And yeah, I think this is this is um, one of the things I think in looking back and happiness wise, again, I think this is a great way we catch up and we talk about things that are really 
important to us and we hope we, we pass this on to other people but that's the happiness right that this will help other people along the way and i think by helping people i mean for me helping people makes me super happy i know you talked about you know material you know you said understated possessions and stuff like that i'm trying to get away from materialism i'm really trying but i find it really hard really difficult i'm i'm with you um, on that in, in really the, trying I, to get away from it. I grew up in a generation where I think that kind of millionaire lifestyle, mm. big house, was an aspiration. And actually, mm. it's not in the slightest bit for me now whatsoever. Um, ironically, and again, not to into detail, I'm probably less interested in that thing, in that sort of thing, when I'm in the most advantageous position to do that. I've got more disposable mm. income than ever, and I'm less interested in that kind of externally flashy lifestyle thing yeah it's really interesting but you can't it? it's, i think it's unattainable because whatever you get there's always something new there's always something better mm. there's always someone who likes something different and you're doing it to impress i just i think you're just on a, a spiral that you're you're never going to get there. and again it's it's that external validation rather than the internal and i think the more again i'm like with the book and i know i went into the passionate rant about it or rant it ramble it i meant to say but what i've done is i've got my life to a place where I've got time to do that. Because I wanted to do it forever. And it's very easy to say, I've got no time. And I think the biggest thing around the happiness, I say, Joe, is how you have to work hard. I, I've i got a, a bubbling theory that it's not even our natural state to be happy. And you have to work really hard to make it happen. And work, the work pays off and it pays off well. But you do, you know, to get to where I am in my job, I've had, there's a lot of years behind it to hone the skills. And it's still every day, it's, it's hard work to make it work but it pays off and it's hard work to be disciplined to make the time to do the things that I want to give me gratification. It'd be so easy to be like, oh, I just scroll my phone for an hour and then the next day and, it, and suddenly you're doing that every day and it's not, it's not fulfilling. Yeah, I agree with that. And this is why even like yesterday, I took that book with me, didn't I? So I've got some downtime. I'll be looking at the book because I love it, but I know yeah. it's adding something. It's adding something to things I really love, like the coaching. Like, oh, I know I'm rereading it, but also, it taps into that, you know, you said about the three hobbies, right? One to make you rich, one to keep you healthy, one to keep you creative, right? And I just love it. And people just were shocked. They weren't surprised that I'd have this book with me. And But, but I loved it. I was having a coffee. I was reading it. I took I just a few pages. Nothing too strenuous. Just I just enjoy that bit. And I know that's adding value. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and I'm like you. I've just got myself into doing the work to get to, to carve out to shape your life the way you want it to be, right? The work life, like I'm in a really good space for the corporate firm I'm working for. In my family, in a good space, you know, my children, university, own a house. You know, well, you know, when I look back, is that I think it's that gratitude thing though, Lee, is what you were talking about, right? When I was going for mental health, I wasn't really recognizing what I already had, but I was in that space that wasn't a really great thing. And and now finding obviously the the gratitude and mindfulness. In fact, when I was doing my counselling, someone talked about mindfulness, I thought, what is that baloney about? That is what I, that was my thoughts. That, that, when I was first, you know, not, not great, they said, oh, have you heard mindfulness? No. And this give me a little, little leaflet with mindfulness. And this was probably 25 years ago, bloody hell, 20 years ago. It's so, like, what is this rubbish? Right. Well, you know, you would, there was just no awareness. There's no self-awareness of it. And so these things have really, really helped. And, um, and now we're talking about it. Now it's like full blown, full circle, isn't it? And tell advocates of it. Yeah, I, I loved everything you said, Lee. I think, you, you you know, I loved it when you said about the understated thing and it's, it should be for you and not for anyone else and not caring about what other people think and doing what makes you fulfilled is the key, isn't it? It's, um, you know, but that's what I think people struggle with. So I think if, you're right. I think it is brave to lean into that. I think you have to have that element to be comfortable with that. And it is, and I know I said it already, but it's 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 hard work. The only thing that gets you... To that happiness you you have to invest in it and it does pay. and it, it builds momentum because i'm i'm in a pattern and a habit with a lot of the things that i do now but i had to work hard to get those habits but those habits are the things that now drive my happiness i love that you see the things and this is something this. we advocated yeah. early on was the whole don't waste your life on netflix i mean in mm, in oh reverse yes. in reverse i was pushing you to watch a bit of netflix and get some comedy in your yeah. life for a for an early on thing for us but it's that yeah. balance because you have to have downtime there is a point where you're like i'm just gonna so and people people will say to me we, you had the conversation i'm like oh, i've not really watched much you like, have you seen that i'm like oh, i've seen that what about blah, blah blah oh i've seen that blah 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 have you seen that but again it's maximizing my time because i'm still doing my job i'm still doing my 
writing my book at the moment. I still decorated the house. Um, I did it at the weekend. We did a bit of gardening and stuff and ate up the weekend on that. So there's a lot of things going on. But then I also, you know, an hour, two hours, whatever it is for that relaxed time as well. You need you need to get a balance. And it's it's not about not wasting your life on Netflix. It's just making sure that that isn't the only thing you do with your downtime and you balance it all out. But again, it's 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 this yeah. is why I think it's almost not natural. It's so the easiest thing to do is just sit there and veg out. But if you did that all the time, that's also that doesn't hit any of those hobby markers mm-hmm. whatsoever. It's not creative, it's not keeping you fit, it's not making you money. There's no fulfillment from that bit whatsoever. But that's not to say even if you halved your time and invested in one hobby, which again will take time to get off the ground and the discipline, and you go through the bits where you're you know you're learning something new or you're trying to build something or you hit that wall exercising where you've got to push through and I just you you've got to have that hard work bit about you I think to make it work well it's really interesting saying that again because it reminds me of stoicism thing about Marcus Aurelius and uh, uh, what is the guy's name Ryan Holiday and he talks about Marcus Aurelius and he said you know he's in his bed and he's having an argument with himself to get out of bed to do something he said why would you not work because if you look at nature what nature's always working but then nature does rest as well like you know, bees will work, but they'll they'll go to you know they'll go to their hive or whatever and do whatever, right? I love that. I love the fact that we can follow nature. Yes, you know, you look at all the animals that you know it's to put a bit bit deep, but look at all the animals. They're always going out finding food for their young ones, whatever. They're always doing something, but then there's always that that, that they do balance it with some downtime. There is some rest, there's relaxation. Um, but why would you not work? You know, that that's what we're built for. We're built to work. Um, it's just getting the right type of work for you and shaping your life to get to that place because to to enjoy your work is like you just don't feel like it's work i mean the that's stuff it. that i do that's just doesn't feel that's like work. that's why you say you move towards just doesn't that. Feel like work. and it's not on, it's not a job title or a position or anything else it's what you do what between whatever you work if you work nine to five monday friday or weekends or overnight or whatever do you enjoy it's like you said, Joe, it's enjoying the process, not the outcome. And do you enjoy what you do or do you enjoy the majority of it? And if not, what can you start to do to shape it in that way? Or what do you need to do that looks different? And again, it's what's the nuts and bolts of that job? And does it start to meet what you internally enjoy? And I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in a place that I don't view my work as work. Don't get me wrong. There's some days where I'm knackered and it's like, oh, I've got... Mm-hmm. But that's that's not that's with, yeah, I could also yeah, I also get days get where it. I've assigned time to do some writing in my book and I'm knackered and I've got to push through it. But I mm. I genuinely enjoy what I do. But I think it's because I've been fortunate to be in a position and I've had the mindset to explore things that I like doing. Sometimes what that means is taking on extra things above what I do. But then that stuff opens doors and avenues. And again, it's 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 the hard work balance to get you there. And it's long. It doesn't. It doesn't happen quickly. It's you've got to be consistent. I sound very like you at the moment, Jose. <laughs> but you are, you're, but you're absolutely right. And I think you said a lot of these things as well. You have to be consistent. Um, but I think you've got to be clear on what you want. And I do this a lot of coaching with people that are just not clear on what they want. Like they say, "Oh, we don't like what I do. Well, what is it you don't like? What you do? Oh, okay. Well, I don't like this. Well, okay. So what do you want? To, what do you want to do about it? What do you enjoy about it? Well, I like this. So. When you get those sorts of answers, you can start to shape the things that you could start to go into, right? I don't think enough of us, you know, people might be listening, are taking time to look at that. If you hate your job right now, what is it that you hate about it? What what could you enjoy about it? What do you enjoy? What do you hate? It's probably the opposite of what you hate. You, they're going to be, you know, you're going to enjoy whatever the things that you don't want to do, right? So find the things that you enjoy, you know, shape shape whatever it is around that. Maybe it's a job you've got right now. Maybe it's a job you shouldn't. Maybe you've got to change an angle. But I think um, definitely my job has definitely shaped where my happiness is because we, we go to work quite a lot of the time. So if you can get your, if you can get your, your job place right, then it usually transfers into, into other life. But again, the same the other way. Sometimes the job thing goes not right and you've got to shape the stuff outside work, right? But what are you spending your time on? Using your time effectively is so important. But having a really clear vision of what, you really do enjoy is so important because you can work every day those little bits every day what you're saying consistently working every day and it only takes little actions every day something at once a day twice a day and before you know at the end of the year you'll be working towards it and i feel so blessed to uh you know be in a position i am right now and of course you know life can come along kick you in the balls can't it always can always do that <laughs> which it tends to do 
Um, but then you're going to be much more resilient to deal with that challenge because you've all been working on yourself. So absolutely, yeah, I love all that you've said there, Lee. I think it's so important. So what are we saying then? When we've got to the end of our lives, we sound we're pretty okay then. We, we, I think we would so. Be wrong. I think I will be, but I think I, I only will be because I'm very conscious of the hard work I need to put in to make it happen. But I am. And I'm doing it a lot better now than I was this time last year or the year before, the year before, and five years before, mm. 10 years before. And hopefully that continues. I'll look back five years from now and be like, God, I've even I've leveled that up even more. And I just want to keep that going. And I think that that is the reason that I will be okay with this one. But I could see I can look back retrospectively and see me going down a different path where I didn't become as conscious of myself and lean into this this world we talk about on this podcast and I think I would have had a totally different answer. Do you know what I think is also important and I really like that answer because there's also a question about not to putting too much pressure on yourself either to do these things like like you said about you know make sure that the things you're setting yourself are not what you say are what that you really do want and not yeah. because of outside because you you can think it's what you want but it's not actually what you want. I don't know if that makes sense. Have I hundred percent it does. And I've you, said, can, you I've, know what you want, but it's not what you want, right? Yeah. I've been there and I see people there and that's it. And again, it's it's that it's the inward, not the outward thing. And it's it's a journey for us all. It doesn't all happen overnight, but hopefully this is giving people some inspiration to think about that. Joe, I've enjoyed this so much, the time has completely run away with me, so we need to do some quick takeaways and wrap us up. Oh, go on. Yeah, yeah, go on. So for me, work harder your happiness is my takeaway. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I really like that. Work hard at your happiness. What specifically, what we got work hard at? I love this. I'm like, we're just going to wrap up. We've got to do it quickly. And you're like, so I'm going to really slowly ask you this big open-ended question. All right. Maybe you could do it in the book. <laughs> maybe we could do it in the book. What, what you have to work hard at is your mindset to know what you want and do the things to make it happen. Yeah, I love that. Really good. Um, for me, it's not caring about what other people think. It's and good. not it's doing it for any other one. people like not other people like really focus on yourself why am i doing this why am i doing it and they say well i'm doing it because i like it or why do you like it i'll go for the three words i've done this with lee before i said well, why are you doing what you do ask yourself the three whys go deeper why why what almost like a child and get to the really root causes to why you're doing the thing you're doing and if you're just doing it like just for money that's not going to fulfill you right money's important but it's not number one right it is important we need to get an income but it should be something that really does like when you do it when you do the thing time just does you just time just you don't even realize the time it's like playing your one of your greatest computer games like you play it and you think oh my god it's nearly two o'clock in the morning what's going on it should feel like that it should be like that if you you know that's where it is and um so yeah that's for me it's just making sure that you don't care what other people think you're doing the thing that you want so almost adding value to the world not harming other people of course that's why i just add a caveat to that i like it that's me you're terrible at wrapping up quickly, Jay. I know. Well, I'll add some context to it. I know. I just, so sometimes I think about, oh, people need a bit of context behind that. So I try and add it a bit more. But maybe keep it simple, stupid, right? Kiss. Always keep it simple, stupid. I love it. Right. Social media at listen to N, listen to O I N. Just put Jose Noy, Inspiration Nation, into your Google machine. Joe's everywhere. YouTube, TikTok. You will join live. You can see the technical difficulties we had at the start live if you follow and subscribe to Joe on there. And. I think that's it. Oh, inspirationnation.org.uk, merch and stuff and all that jazz. Three, two, one, Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys Catch later. Catch you guys later. Thank you. Thank you, TikTokers. Thank you. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions of what you'd want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later. To keep liking away, please, uh, that'd be good. Get us out there. How 
Appreciate the love on TikTok. People joining us now on YouTube as well. Um, so let's go, Joe. Inspiration Nation. Hello, Jose Noya, Lee Kemp, and absent Ryan Boniface this week. We do miss him. Joe, he's holding up the book. Tell everyone what we're talking about. We are talking about the fifth regret of the dying. I wish I'd let myself be happier. So, Lee, I wish I'd let myself be happier. Go to the end of your life on your deathbed. What's your rating of your happiness? Hold on, you'll love this, and it'll be going on YouTube now. We have a technical issue, Jose. Lee, what's going on? I don't know, I can't hear you on my desktop, mate. You can't hear me at all? No. So, apologies there, TikTokers. We just, uh, we are just waiting for YouTube to go live. Um, Hiya, Nezreen. Thank you for joining us. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. TK5. Thank you for joining. Really appreciate it. It's we do really appreciate cool. everyone. Right, we'll give this a go again, Joe. Go. Keep talking to okay. TikTok. Oh, I'm talking to TikTok, right, okay. Um, there we go, TK technical issues overcome. Sorry, I cut in as I got you to talk there. Anyway, we're on. 